watched um what was that? I was watching so many random things on the old tube in it. <clears throat> then I'm watching the debut of at DJ Academics podcast, which is gonna be hosted on Spotify. Um ironically enough, especially when you consider what happened with Joe Biden and his podcast, you know, um fallout with Spotify and their lack of being able to negotiate. But it seems like um Spotify have decided to sign up DJ Academics. I've not really seen any official press for it so far as to what the terms are and all that malarkey, but considering how Bosey he's talking, I'm assuming you've got a pretty good deal. So congrats to him. And he decided to come out, out of the gates, you know shooting and not taking any prisoners by having a sit down interview with WAC 100 um the infamous what would you call it the infamous um west coast gang member manager guy right goon and six nine the again the infamous uh snitch and they sat down for a very interesting conversation that if anything made me more perplexed as to why certain rappers who purport to be gangsters who purport to live a certain kind of life who don't agree with what 6ix9ine does or did why they would want to react to him in any kind of way because he's clearly somebody who's decided a very long time ago that he doesn't care if he lives or dies and he's just in it to create chaos like he it's really really does remind me a lot of the character of um of the joker in the in the dark knight right the, the first one um the first uh dark knight right yeah the first one he reminds me of that in terms of the idea of just what what did the what did the butler say to batman in one of the bits something like oh some people just like to see the world burn in it they just like to see the chaos and i think because batman was trying to figure out or bruce wayne was trying to figure out what's the what's the joker's objectives like what is he trying to get out from this like what's he trying to do, 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 do? And it's like no it might not be a power play it might just be him just wanting to see shit go up in flames and i think six nine has seen the other side of things obviously having gone through what he went through in the terms of the trial um and in terms of him kind of going on stand and the the kind of backlash that came from that and now he's just like you know what i just want to see everything burn and i'm going to take whoever i can down with me and it seems like he wants to take people down with him and people are willingly kind of stepping up to the plate and engaging in, in a guy that clearly has nothing to lose it feels like he does obviously because he has a family he has a kid he has maybe a couple of kids but he's acting like he doesn't so i don't know why everyone else is kind of willing to go with him like on this journey because in my opinion there's only going to be one winner <coughs> and so far he's had a really strong ability to effectively avoid any kind of karmic retribution for the things that he's done which you know is not my place to say because again i'm no karma god but you'd imagine for the amount of people he's put into jail especially the ones that you know had done nothing to him personally you would imagine it'd be some level of karmic retribution but so far he's been able to avoid it and you know who knows why who knows what who knows it's not my place to say but the interview was interesting in the fact that more so that this is maybe the only the first one where for once we saw six nine on the back foot and we also saw him not question but we also saw him put in a place where he couldn't kind of say the way that he acts is quote-unquote a gangster and he wasn't excused no one like what kind of didn't give him a out in terms of his reasoning of snitching which is always kind of perplexed me because you would imagine you know if you decided to live a certain way of life that you will just accept everything that comes with it. And I would imagine part of what comes with it is that the people you work with aren't necessarily the most stand up of people, right? Because that's the whole reason why you work with them because they're willing to do things that most people wouldn't want to do, which is, you know, perfectly fine and reasonable. So to be in a position of 6 9 and be like, oh, the reason why I snitched on these people or the reason why I told, the reason why I gave them up was because they weren't loyal to me because they supposedly stepped my baby mother. They supposedly were the ones that kidnapped, or well, not supposedly, they did kidnap him. Bloody blah, blah, blah. It's just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't seem like a good enough reason, in my opinion, to do something like that. If you just do it, you just have to decide you do it because you just want to, because you don't want to spend, you know, too much time in prison. It makes complete sense. I'm sure going to jail, even for that short period of time, was a good realization to realize, you know what, I don't want to live this life. But to excuse your behavior because allegedly the scumbaggy people that you hang around with did scumbaggy things, it's just a bit, it's a bit of a mad one, really. I don't really necessarily agree with that in that respect. And also, I would imagine there were some people within 
there must be some people that were you know snitched or on or were basically brought down off the back of that one case who had nothing to do with the alleged kidnapping or even the supposed smashing of his baby mother which i still debate if that even happened but even if it did would they didn't all do it supposedly i don't imagine she let the entire nine tray run a complete train on her that would be completely insane let's say she was in a relationship with a couple of those guys who knows maybe one do they all deserve to go down because of that one person i don't necessarily know so that was cool to see him push back on that regard um but i don't know man i just think it was a fascinating thing to watch and the backlash from it as well has been mad in it you've got 69 versus 21 you've got 69 versus all these random ny goons on clubhouse like so many random things have kind of spilled off the back of it and it's just a wild place to be where you've got all these multi-millionaires right for the most part or people that maybe you know, high thousand days but people who are living a very affluent lifestyle you know um operating within the music industry which is again a point one percent industry not everybody gets a chance to make money in music but they, these are people who are um they're very successful people from minority backgrounds you know who've come from the gutter work their way up put themselves on be able to provide for their families give opportunity to people in the local communities and they're still sat here debating and arguing about who's the biggest baddest gangster of them all like none of you guys are do you know what i mean none of you guys are like you send your kids to private schools you get driven around in cars you have armored security next to you like what is this like such a bizarre place to be where people are trying to outscore each other in terms of gangster points like i will never understand it like it's, it's one thing just being a gangster and then rapping right fair but this like millionaire thing is just utterly utterly bizarre this millionaire gangster thing is something that i've never really understood but it does remind me some time ago i remember when i was like i don't know how old i must have been it doesn't matter there was some time ago there was a kid in our school who was extremely talented at football one of maybe only a few people that you know had the opportunity to make it out of pro club really really young and again at that time in my area um for the places i'm from you know the only way to make it out legitimately was obviously to do music or to play football but even at that time music thing wasn't really too big because everyone had seen what happened to like roll deep you know what i mean they got into music doing one thing and then as soon as they got into that kind of mainstream cycle they made them make that fucking shitty traffic light song in it so the 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 way of making music nowadays and being your authentic self wasn't on the table back in the day so the only real option to come out of the, of, of the hood was sports so if one of your friends was able to become pro you will make you look at him like he was flipping prince harry i mean you're just like oh my god you've made it you're set for life and one of those kids in our school obviously made it very very early and he had everything kind of you know on a plate for him he represented england really early his district like just went through all the necessary steps in order to become a full-time pro and again it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't become a premier league football player but the fact that you're able to play professional football and you're able to pay your wages by just kicking a ball around is the dream making them 10 grand a week playing in the championship who cares it's still good money and then suddenly i don't know he disappeared off the face of the map and then i think i randomly bumped into him at like a bus stop somewhere in like custom house and he had on like no t-shirt he had like a pit bull with him with with a massive kind of chain wrapped around his hand you know his trousers are on you know you know exposing his boxes and stuff walking around like a goon and i remember just looking at him and just like talking to me about stuff and i just couldn't i couldn't figure it out i was like this guy was never a goon was never somebody that was about any kind of street life at all and suddenly in the period of what a couple of years maybe less than that he had suddenly transformed himself completely and given himself up to the streets when that was never a part of his lifestyle and it just perplexed me i could never understand it i was like it's one thing if you were always from that and then football kind of took you out of it and then you got injured and then here you are surrounded by the bad influences again but he was never about that life he was always kind of well, well adjusted family even though he had a single mom she raised him really well they were very well to do she cared about education like he used to get a lot of trouble if he didn't get good grades and shit like he was one of those kind of rare black boys in the end where you know sorry one of those kind of rare black boys from like a single parent household where his mom was on job like you know even though she was working full time so it, it just didn't make any sense to me and you see this guy you know a couple of years later and he's topless with tattoos and stuff holding a, a dog with a massive chain you're like what the fuck is this and it was pathetic at that time and that guy was again was that level so when i'm seeing people like whacking six nine and you know arguing over stuff like this i'm like 
especially for wax case like these guys like 50 years old with like kids and a wife and shit and you're like raging and arguing about people about gangs and stuff and he wants to fight 21 and it's like that's why i said at the end of the day this whole thing the only person that wins is six nine he's the only one that wins really he wants all this attention anyway you know because by and large you know the industry has decided to kind of cancel his career he doesn't get on playlists anymore the only thing that kind of goes viral at the moment is his interviews and his antics online no one really cares about his musical output anymore for the most part he's not really got the opportunity to collaborate with big name acts because they don't want the negative attention so the only thing that he can do is just make a spectacle for himself and people are willing to kind of join with the spectacle and then complain when the spectacle starts spectacling it's just it's just bizarre I, re I just do not understand and again even if i was a goon i'd be like if i didn't agree with his way of life i just wouldn't talk to the guy i wouldn't mention him he'd just be dead to me you know what i mean i wouldn't be wasting my time being on clubhouse shouting into a phone because just, just imagine the scene of seeing some hardened gangster somewhere with his hand clutched into his boxer shorts you know gripping onto some something whilst he's shouting with his, with his hand on his phone in the other hand like come on like it's just so pathetic i find it so utterly utterly pathetic but I don't know. I guess if you're really about that life, maybe any slight rep, any kind of slight misrepresentation, whether it's on the internet, social media, and clubhouse, is gonna make you, you know, get riled and not get un hot under the collar. But there truly must be better things to worry about than whether or not Six Nine is a civilian or a gangster or not. Did he snitch or not? Is he real or not? Like, who cares, man? Who really cares? Like. It <coughs> I just don't get it but if you haven't watched it do check it out it's a really good interview it's three hours long though so i probably don't recommend watching it if you don't like hearing people talk around talking circles because after about the one hour mark they basically repeat themselves for about two hours but if you're interested to find out you know to learn more about what 100 especially and 69 as two really bizarro individuals on probably two sides of the same coin then definitely check out the interview definitely give you a good understanding of what those guys are about in general it definitely will